हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Okay, if you go down to the mats, please. Thank you. So everybody can settle down on the mats and hold up. So please devotees, those of you who are outside, you please welcome to come in. Maharaj right, will start this class shortly. And devotees, I'd like you to come forward. Please come forward. Don't leave Maharaj go in front. Management Council of Sri Jagannath Mandir. We take great pleasure. Can we have some silence, please? Thank you. So on behalf of the Temple Management Council of Sri Jagannath Mandir, we take great pleasure in welcoming His Holiness Bhakti Vikta Manaj Maharaj, who is so, so dear to His Khan Malaysia, amongst many other sannyasis who visit and give us their wonderful, sweet association from time to time. As mentioned by Sudarshan Prabhu, yes, Maharaj has been away from us for slightly over three years. And therefore, we've had the separations. A few of us managed to get a little bit of darshan from Maharaj who went to Mayapur. But it's our wonderful, sweet opportunity to have this wonderful association with His Holiness, Arjuna Maharaj. Maharaj has also, after three years, taken a very wonderful travel journey in this part of the world, especially in Malaysia. Maharaj started with Singapore, went to Johor, and went to Malacca, and then here, and the Maharaj is from here also moving a little bit tonight to Sram to Klang. And I think one of the three days in Sramban. And then off to probably Bortala and then to Tolu Temple. So with this great opportunity, can we say three Hari Bowls to welcome His Holiness Arjuna Maharaj? Hari 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 This is our Vaishnava way today. We got permission because we know that Shiva Maharaj does not always give this permission. But we got permission from Maharaj that we can actually welcome him the way we welcome all gurus and sannyasis to Sri Jagannath Mandir. Maharaj, we want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity to offer lands and welcome you very nicely. So with this short introduction, which I need not to go further than this. And uh, somehow, we also got this wonderful news that uh, Maharaj has extended his stay in said Sri Jagadat Pandir. So, another loud Hari Bol with some energy. So we are fortunate. In that sense, we are very fortunate that Maharaj has extended his stay here. So, which means we will have extra classes. Now, devotees, why Maharaj is here? He has been giving us Bhagavad class every morning. So, if I know many of you are working and we have especially now that the NCOs are all over and nobody talks about Mr. Bobby. Yeah? But nevertheless, if you find the time, and especially the evenings, the weather is quite against us, the traffic jams are quite against us, we appreciate that. But those of you who can, please come uh, and join us for these wonderful sessions that we are having in the mornings as well as in the evenings. And we will post it, so please keep, because one of the days, Maharaj is going to Sramban, but keep Joseph's poster, this is exactly why we should use the technology. Check with SGM Dell News to know any updates about classes because Maharaj has extended his stay. So with this, thank you very much dear devotees and Maharaj, thank you very much. Okay.
Manaj has been a... Uh, you want to know whether you would like to have a Tamil translation when the class is made? Yeah. Okay. Manaj is requesting that yes, we should have a Tamil translation. So Sanjitupa Mataji, you could do... Do you want to just do it as a guru? Yes. I think that will be better. So Hare Krishna. Yar kalla Tamil matu mei vilangum daiva seidu kaiyathu kunga. Aangi la vilangum Tamil matu mei vilangum. So ni kalla kujai inda pakam ana ogle kundu Tamil translate pannu. Thank you, Mataji. So that way, Maharaj class can go with a good flow. And since we have only about four of you, so. Anggap bangga, anda juga rasa. Forgive me for my temper. Thank you very much, Solanas. She is a voice jazz. Jaya Radha Madhava, Punja Bihari. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Gopi Janakala Bha Giri Bharata Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janakan Janha Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Vana Chahari Yamuna Thira Vana Chahari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bhardhari Yashodan Nandana Raja Jana Ranjana Yashodan Nandana Raja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Jaya Tatham Adhava 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai ko hari ko hari ko hari ko nitai ko hari ko. Jai Jai Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jai Shiva Prabhu Pad. Gorte Manande Haribo.
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We're reading Bhagavad Gita chapter 15 Yoga of the Supreme Person text number 11 Yatanto yoginas chainam Yatanto yoginas chainam Pashyanti atmani Pashyanti atmani Avastitan Patanti atmani avastitam Yatanto Piakritatmano Nainam Pashyanti Achetasaha Yatanto Yoginas Chainam Pashyanti Atmani Avastita Yatanto Pia Kritatmano Nainam Pashyanti Achetasa Yatanto Yoginas Chainam Pashyanti Atmani Avastitam Yatanto Pia Kritatmano Nainam Pashyanti Achetasaha Oh, yeah. 
Yatanta Endeavoring Yogina Transcendentalist Cha Also Enam This Pashyanti Can see Atmani In the Self Avastitam Sorry. Situated. Situated. Yadanta. Endeavoring. Endeavoring. Api. Api. Although. Although. Akrita Atmana. Akrita Atmana. The, those without self realization. Those without self realization. Na. Na. Do not. Do not. Enam. This, this Pashyanti Si Achetasaha Having undeveloped minds Translation The endeavoring transcendentalists who are situated in self-realization can see all this clearly but those whose minds are not developed and who are not situated in self-realization cannot see what is taking place although they may try. You can repeat. The endeavoring transcendentalists who are situated in self-realization can see all this clearly. But those whose minds are not developed and who are not situated in self-realization cannot see what is taking place, though they may try. Purport. There are many transcendentalists on the path of self-realization, but one who is not situated in self-realization cannot see how things are changing in the body of the living entity. The word yogina is significant in this connection. In the present in the present day, there are many so-called so yogis and there are many so-called associations of yogis. But they are actually blind in the matter of self-realization. They are simply addicted to... They're simply addicted to all sorts of or some sort of gymnastic exercise and are satisfied if the body is well built and healthy. They have no other information. They are called Yatanto Apiakrit Atmana even though they are endeavoring in a so-called yoga system, they are not self-realized. Such people cannot understand the process of the transmigration of the soul. Only those who are actually in the yoga system and have realized the self, the world and the supreme and the Supreme Soul on the Supreme Lord, in other words, the Bhakta Yogis, those engaged in pure devotional service in Krishna consciousness, can understand how things are taking place. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya 
Chatsurunmilitanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhisdam Dam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagadpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patita nam pavane pyo vaishnavibyo namo namaha Nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale Srimati bhakti vedanta swamin iti namane Namaste sarasati devi goravani pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachate Satarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Kadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so, on reading Srila Prabhupada's purport, we may be a little confused. We may think, oh, Prabhupada is condemning people who have a healthy and strong body. No, Prabhupada doesn't mind you having a strong and healthy body. But Prabhupada is simply pointing out there's more to self-realization than simply having a strong and healthy body. Life is not meant for just simply having a strong and healthy body because ultimately that will always fail no matter how strong and healthy your body may be at some point in time you have to succumb to the laws of material nature. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Jatashehi Dhruvam Ritju Dhruvam Janma Mritashyacha. For one who has taken birth, death is certain. So even though you may have a strong and healthy body, we have to admit that at some point we're going to have to succumb to old age maybe even also disease and also certainly death. As Srila Prabhupada used to say, the death rate is the same, it has always been 100%. In other words, everyone is going to die. So the goal of yoga is not just simply to have a strong and healthy body, but the ultimate purpose of yoga is to realize the self. Realizing, first of all, ourself as a spiritual being, one then wants to go on and understand also the Supreme Self. That there's not just simply one soul in the body, but there are two. There is also the Supreme Soul. So some people are, we can see people practicing yoga or engaging in some kind of spiritual practice with all different kinds of motives. Some people just simply want to get some kind of mystic power, yoga powers. 
they want to do things like walk across water or they want to produce things from far away maybe prapti city to bring some delicacy from far away that will immediate, immediately appear or maybe they want to take go into the ganga take bath at one point and come up at some other point hundreds and hundreds of miles away these are all different yoga feats and some people think this is the goal of yoga other people are thinking the goal of yoga is simply to realize that I am Brahman. As we say, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Spirit. And they're thinking ultimately there's only the oneness and we have to simply merge into that oneness of Brahman. So the problem with this kind of understanding is that people think that Lord Krishna is also a manifestation of the Brahman. They're thinking that the Brahman is the ultimate absolute truth. And when Lord Krishna comes in this world, he comes from the Brahman. They don't understand how in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has already explained that he is the basis of the Brahman. Brahmano hi pratistaham. Lord Krishna is saying that the Brahman comes from him. But less educated people, they're thinking the Brahman is the source of everything and when Krishna, Lord Krishna comes in this world, he comes from the Brahman. And when he leaves the world, he enters back into the Brahman. They do not understand that Lord Krishna is the origin of everything, including the Brahman. So Lord Krishna describes how people whose minds are not developed, they cannot understand these things. They have small brains. We can see also how in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna talks about how people may worship other gods than the Supreme God. They may worship the different devas in order to get some material benefit. So Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how these people, their intelligence is described as being Alpa Medasaha. Medasaha meaning intelligence and Alpa meaning very meager, very small. Antavattu falam tesham tadbhavati alpa medasham. They worship gods to get some material benefit. They want to have some enjoyment here in the material world. So people may argue, well, what's wrong with that? What we all want to enjoy. Yes, we say yes, we want to enjoy also. But we have to understand there are different levels of enjoyment. What kind of enjoyment do you want? Do you want to enjoy like the dogs and like the hogs which eat stool? Lord Rishabdev was instructing his sons in this matter that he was advising his 100 sons Lord Rishavdev was preparing to retire into the forest to take up Vanaprastha, but before he left for the forest, he gave important instructions to his 100 sons that he did not want his sons to waste the valuable human form of life just to pursue the path of material sense gratification. Lord Rishavdev said that the pleasure of the material body 
is there even for the pigs which eat stool. So don't waste your time endeavoring for that kind of pleasure, but rather purify your existence by accepting a little austerity and by undergoing the proper austerity one can purify one's existence and go on to experience real pleasure. We, we also want pleasure in coming to Krishna consciousness. We're not renouncing the world, rather we want to utilize everything in the world in a proper manner, in a manner to experience the greatest pleasure. And that pleasure comes not from the mind and senses, but real pleasure comes from the soul. However, people with a small mind, a small brain, they cannot understand their spiritual nature. They cannot understand their actual identity. And they think that at the time of death, everything is finished. Indeed, Srila Prabhupada noted how even some so-called learned men think like this. Srila Prabhupada went to Moscow, I think it was in the year 1972, and he went to Moscow and he was able to meet with one professor in the university there, and there was a professor of Asian studies. And his name was Professor Kotovsky, and Prabhupada met with him, and they were discussing about the nature of life. And Prabhupada was explaining how that we, we give up one body, and then we will take another body somewhere. But the professor was shocked. And he said to Prabhupada, he said, Oh, Swamiji, at the time of death, everything is finished. So Srila Prabhupada was quite surprised to think that such an educated man who was studying Asian philosophy and a professor in the subject of Asian philosophy, but he had no knowledge of transmigration. Or you could say rather, he did have knowledge, but he didn't accept it. And he was saying, no, at the time of death, everything is finished. So how do we actually know that we're going to take birth again? Well, first of all, we have Shastra, scriptures. We have the words of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita describing the eternal nature of the soul. Some people will say, no, no, I cannot accept Shastra. I don't, these books, this is your book. I cannot, I don't follow that. We have our own books. We have our books, M material science. Medicine, we have knowledge based on chemicals. Your knowledge, your so-called knowledge is all based on your belief. So then we have other evidence about life after death. We have, for example, the famous professor at the Princeton University his name was uh, Dr. Ian Stevenson, and he did a, a lot of research on people who had uh, previous life experiences. After uh, they had memories from their previous life, and he did a lot of uh, very authoritative research, interviewing people in all different countries of the world and collecting the evidence and examining all. And he found very 
conclusive evidence of people who actually did have memories of their previous life and they had no way to explain how they had these memories other than the fact that it was a fact that previously they existed in another body in a different place. So they, have that, they had that evidence and we have also evidence of people who have near-death experiences. A near-death experience, it may take place, for example, someone may have a, a heart attack and they may go, they may be unconscious and at some point they may even go out of the body. And some people have actually described how they went out of the body and they were able to see everything which was taking place. Sometimes in the course of a, a major surgery, a person may have a clinical death and their soul may go out of the body and they may, and, and some people have actually described how they were out of the body and they could see everything taking place around their physical body. And they could hear the doctors talking and how the doctors were working to revive the patient and bring back the consciousness. And they could actually repeat the different events which took place. How can we explain these kind of things? Again, it is conclusive evidence that certainly life, there is a life after death. And just as there is a life after death, we have had previous lives also. We're not just simply a combination of chemicals as materialistic, atheistic people claim. So the word of the script the word of scriptures is very important. For people who reject the scriptures, then they can never have happiness, they can never have peace of mind, and they can never achieve the supreme destination. So what about these people? What is their position? We generally say for them, God exists as death. God comes as cruel death. And as death, he takes everything away from them. They lose everything which they're claiming to be their own. Their property, their family members, their bank balance, everything. At the time of death, it will all be taken from them. And then what will be the result? Then they will be put into some hellish condition of life. They will enter maybe into some lower species, like the dog or the tree, and they have to stand in this body for some time. And for people who are more sinful, they will have to go to the court of Yamaraj and they will be punished for their sins. So this is the fate of those people who don't accept the, 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 the spiritual nature of the soul. However, for those who are understanding the self, who can understand that, that there is the eternal self within the body, then at the time of death, according to their own consciousness and according to their particular qualification, then they will take another body some other place. If they are Krishna conscious, they may go to where Lord Krishna is appearing in some other universe. One of the Goswamis, I think Jiva Goswami, he says that a devotee will not usually immediately go back to Godhead, but he will take birth 
wherever Lord Krishna is appearing and he, he will get further training before entering into the spiritual world. And that further training will be taking part in the pastimes of Lord Krishna, in the actual presence of Krishna. So this is the future of the devotee, the pure devotee, one who is in Krishna consciousness, who is able to remember Krishna at the end of life, then they will go to be with Krishna. And what about those, those of us who are not successful in Krishna consciousness? Maybe for some reason we haven't practiced so well and at the end of life we're not so conscious of Krishna. What will happen to that kind of devotee? So in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains about the fate of the unsuccess unsuccessful yogi. There are two kinds of unsuccessful yogis. One is practiced for a short time. He just practiced for a short time. And so he wasn't fully able to go back to Godhead. So what happens to that person? Lord Krishna explains, he will go to the heavenly planets and he will enjoy sense gratification there because he, had, he still has the desire to enjoy the material world. So he will go to the higher planets and he will enjoy there for some time. And when he's fully satisfied, he's enjoyed a lot, and when he's used up all of his piety, then he will come back here to this planet. And on this planet, he will take birth in a family which is wealthy or aristocratic. And in this way, by being born in a family which is wealthy and aristocratic, he will have the opportunity to again continue his spiritual practice. And he may be fortunate enough, we hope, to contact the devotees and to take up bhakti yoga. That is for someone who just practiced for a short time. And someone else who's practiced yoga for a longer time, but still somehow not fully ready to go back to Godhead. So what happens to that person? So Lord Krishna describes, for that particular person, he will take birth in a family of devotees. And being born in a family of devotees, he again has the opportunity from his very birth to continue Krishna consciousness and to take up the spiritual practice. And Prabhupada explained how both he and his own spiritual master had that good opportunity to be born in a family of devotees. Of course, Prabhupada's spiritual master, whose disappearance day we are celebrating tomorrow, by the way. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he was born the seminal son of Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur. And Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur had a big family. He had 12 children, I think. and. Uh, he brought them all up to be devotees and particularly prominent amongst his children was Bhimal Prasad who became Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada. So from his very childhood he had been taught Bhagavad Gita slokas. Just in the summer, I had the opportunity to travel to Bangalore. And while I was staying there in Bangalore, I met a, one couple. They told me how their young son had memorized the whole Vishnu Sahasrana. And he's only six years old. 
and he cannot read but he can hear and so from the age of six actually this they put his him he's he's in the guinness book of records the youngest person to memorize the vishnu sahasrana so his parents were they were mad, madvas but devotees initiated in iskon and they brought him up the reciting vishnu sahasrana it's an example of some, you know, the child must have definitely been an advanced yogi in the previous life. And therefore, on account of his previous birth, he'd taken birth in a family of devotees. And from a very early age, he can cultivate, begin his practice of cultivating spiritual knowledge. Generally, young children, they're very good to train in reciting, getting them to recite verses, slokas, these things. It's very, it's very easy for them, it's enjoyable for them. And when they are given that opportunity and they can do these things, then throughout their life the memory is there. It's so. The childhood is so important and we, Srila Prabhupada was very concerned how the children born into ISKCON should be brought up to, to give them all opportunity to again cultivate their Krishna consciousness and to perfect their lives. In fact, Prabhupada writes in the purports in Srimad Bhagavatam that when a couple are trying to conceive a child that they should think that we want this child that this will be their last birth in this world that this child will not have to take birth again and in this way the couple try to conceive a God conscious child giving it the opportunity to finish its birth, its life in the material world and go back to the spiritual realm. So somebody practiced for a long time, not fully perfect, they're born into the Krishna conscious family. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was like that and Srila Prabhupada was also like that. Of course, Prabhupada's father was not famous like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but Prabhu, Prabhupada said his father was a pure devotee of Lord Krishna. And you can see in the, in the dedication inside the cover of the Krishna book that Srila Prabhupada dedicates the Krishna book to his father. And Prabhupada said that whatever he learned from his spiritual master, he had already learned from his own father. Worshipping deities, uh, playing madanga, doing kirtan, strict vegetarian, all these things. His father had already taught him all of these things. Only one thing which he learned from his spiritual master, which his own father did not teach him, and that was the publication of literature. Prabhupada's father, uh, it was, he had a little business, he, he had some kind of cloth shop, and he was selling cloth in the market there in Bara Bazaar in Calcutta. But he was a pure devotee, and Prabhupada explains how Every day he would see his father worship the deities and he had his own deities and he would worship and he would bow down to the deity. And he arranged everything for Srila Prabhupada. Just like when it came time for Prabhupada's marriage, his father arranged the marriage for him. And Prabhupada told his father, he said, I don't think I like that girl very much. And his father said, that's good. Then she will be a good wife for you. You won't be too attached to her. 
So that, that was the kind of education he got from his father. And with that kind of education, Prabhupada could go on to become the Acharya, the founder Acharya for the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Because his father saw that his son got the best education. Education not in just making money. He didn't train him to be a businessman. At one point, the family, the relatives, they wanted to send Prabhupada to England, that he should become a lawyer. But Prabhupada's father said, no, I don't want my son to become a, a worldly person, just to be a materialist. So he, Prabhupada then went to college and he studied Sanskrit. Now people who study Sanskrit, they're not going to make a lot of money. They're not going to be big businessmen, you know. Nowadays, what do people study, go and study IT and everything, and we're thinking, yes, we'll get a good job. Who is thinking we want to study Sanskrit? Very few people. But people who have a good brain, purified brain, they will think these things are important. Just like Sankirtan, performing Sankirtan, people, sometimes people think, oh, that's strange to go in the streets and chant and sing Hare Krishna. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. People who have poor brains, they don't want to do that. But people who have a good brain, a, a good purified intelligence, then they're very eager to take up the Sankirtan. Indeed, it, it, it is described like that in Srimad Bhagavatam. In the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, you have uh, Karabhajana Muni was asked by Nimi Raj to tell about the incarnations of the Lord in each age. So when he came to Kali Yuga, he described the activities of the Lord in the Kali Yuga, the Yuga avatar in Kali Yuga. Krishna Varnam Tevish Akrishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasaha. So, Su Medasaha. Again, Medasa, intelligence, and Su Medasa means auspicious, purified brain. People who have a good brain, they will join the Sankirtan. Yagnai Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasaha. They will take part in the congregational chanting of the Holy Name. Of course, we could also point out that Sankirtan has many different manifestations. It is not only just only Mridanga and Kartals. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada coined the phrase Brihad Medanga. And what was the Brihad Medanga? It was the printing press, because the printing press is printing books. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was sending books to America and to Canada in 1896. In the year Prabhupada was born, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was already sending books around the world to the major educational institutes in Canada and in America. And the devotees went there. Later on, after Prabhupada told them about this, the devotees went to McGill University in Toronto and they found the books which Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent. So that is also Sankirtan. 
book distribution, not only chanting the holy name and playing madanga and kartals, which is also good. It's very important. We do want to be out there. We want people to see us, that we're still around and we're still chanting. It's important. People need to see us. Sometimes we go out on Sankirtan, people will say, Hey, where have you been? I've never seen you people for years. So that's not good. We do want to be out there. We want to be in the field. And we do want to be preaching. Some kind of Sankirtan. Nowadays also we, make it, we take advantage of the technology to do Sankirtan. Internet Sankirtan. And you can preach to a lot of people. You can make a lot of new friends on the internet. You can be in touch with people all over the planet without moving out of your seat. You can sit at home and be in touch with people all over the world, in all the continents, and you can be preaching and giving them Krishna consciousness. And there's a need for all of us to do that. You know the technology, don't waste it to just look at Bollywood movies. Don't waste your time watching some foolish Bollywood movie or playing some video game. That is stupid. That is just a waste. But use that technology for the service of Krishna and give Krishna consciousness to others. So, so many young devotees have come here this morning. Very nice to see all the Gokul Garden, Gokul Garden devotees, yes, our future devotees. So we have a bright future here. All right, we will stop and ask if there's any question or comment. Yes, Prabhu. How can the Alpha become How can people who are small brains, Alpha Medasa, become Sumedasaha? By the mercy of a devotee. They contact a devotee and the devotee will naturally tell them about Thank your time. But if the devotee is merciful, the devotee will engage them in thank your time. Get them to chant the holy name. Devotees have that potency that they can bring pe they can change people. Just like Srila Prabhupada could go to the West and he could give Krishna consciousness to so many people. People who were much worse than Alpa Medasa. People who were near Medasa. They had no intelligence at all. But Prabhupada could give them a good brain. So association is very important. That association can change people. Any other question? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Then it's fit to move about from 
Now my question is, we in this court understand when we die, either Dhammaputas or Vishnudutas will come take the soul. But this guy born as a Roman Catholic, he experiences that Jesus came and saved him. What is the connection between that for my right? So, Prabhu is saying one of his friends was a Roman Catholic and he had a, a, he had a very serious health problem. He was near to death and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to him and saved him. So he is asking what is the connection because we say, you know, the Yamadutas come and take you to Yamaraj. And so how is it that this man was, he had a vision of Jesus Christ and because of Lord Jesus appearing to him, now he has very strong faith in his Catholic belief. Yes, I think it's quite reasonable. You know, he, he was supposed to die, but he wasn't fully, he wasn't a very sinful person. So he had some belief. He believed in Jesus. He had some belief in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ appeared to him. So gave him a chance, like a second birth. Second birth, right? Like Ajamila. Ajamila chanted the holy name. So it saved him. The sinful people, they go to Yamalok. The sinful people, the Yamadurs come and take these sinful people. But the man you described, it was some, he had some belief in religion. He had a belief, he had a, he had a strong faith in something. So Lord Jesus appeared to him, and gave him more faith. He didn't have to go to Yamalok, but if he'd been more sinful, he might have went to Yamalok. But because he had some actual belief in God, so he, he, would, he was prevented from, he didn't have to go to Yamalok. So we don't say we're the, you, we don't say there's no other way. We, we, we accept the absolute truth that's in all the scriptures. So he knows Jesus Christ. His faith is in Jesus Christ. So that's how Jesus Christ would appear to him. That's what was in his heart, his thinking like that. It doesn't mean that Jesus is God. But Jesus is like a Vaishnava, right? Jesus died for people's sins. So, Jesus could come to people like that. He could come and give, encourage them to go on with their religious practices. In the Bible, they also say that, they, of course, they took reincarnation out of the Bible. It was originally in the Bible, but they edited it out. In the Old Testament? Yes, it was there originally in the Bible. It was there, but and they edited it out because they thought, well, if we have this reincarnation there, people will never become God conscious because they'll all say, well, next lifetime. People will think, oh, well, wait till the next life, next life. But initially it was there in the Christian, the old, if you look, look in the, like the Dead Scrolls and, you know, the original translations, they have changed so much in these texts. Just like it used to say, thou shalt not kill. So then they changed it, thou shalt, thou shalt not commit murder. So these kind of things have been done because people thought, oh, you shouldn't kill. They thought, oh, you shouldn't kill animals. So they put, yeah, right, slaughterhouses also. And so there's so many changes made. There are many things which were in the Bible which are not there now. And one of them was also reincarnation, transmigration of the soul. Marie Chipper.
open of association. And today, I think most of us will be feeling so happy having this gathering, feeling the Bhagavatam and Bhagavatam and you having here, and we're feeling very good. But tomorrow, many of us, sometimes people, children, they back to school, the youth, to the university, to working place. We have association with the world, with the people, and many of them, they are not, not devotees, they are materialistic people. Uh, how to deal with association uh, for, for us no, in the world? No? If, if any advice uh, from you, Maharaj, it help? Well, the main advice which we give is that you should have good sadhana. You have to do spiritual practice every morning. It's not that we just come once a week and hear and chant, but we want to make a spiritual practice a daily business. Every morning you want to chant and you want to try to read a little from the scriptures. You, we need to do these things on a daily basis. Just like medicine, you're taking medicine, you don't just take the medicine once a week. You know, it's usually it's once a day, maybe three times a day or something. So like that. So this Krishna consciousness is like a medicine. It's, it, it's also a vaccine. You know, the people, they want everyone vaccinated. So our vaccination is hearing and chanting and worshipping Krishna. And this protects us from the influences of the material energy. Yeah, we have to go outside in the material world. We have to go out and work. We have to confront the material energy. Krishna told Arjuna, go out and fight. Arjuna, look what Arjuna had to do. But we have to remember Krishna. The very first thing is to remember Krishna. So with our mind fixed on Krishna, then we go out and meet the material world, go out and work and confront everyone. So it's, it's very important you have that kind of program. So we encourage devotees, you know, you have, you have an altar at home. If you're not going to come here for the morning program, then you have to do things on your own at home. You have to chant, you have to have Krishna there in your home, and you have to you know, read the book a little bit. Start to read the books regularly. Make it a habit. And just try to hear. We do have so many classes available online. There's so many devotees speaking. You can get Tamil classes. You can get all kinds of languages classes. You can get Bhagavatam classes, all different scriptures. So much is there on the internet. You have to take advantage to hear and you have to fix your mind on these things. You have to hear carefully and that will protect us from the material energy. So that's how we associate. We get that strong association and it protects us from the material energy. Just like the vaccine, they, you put, they put it in one point in the body, it goes through the whole body. So our vaccine is the ears, right? It goes in the ears and it goes through the whole body. Our, we become fully surcharged in Krishna consciousness. So this is important for us as devotees. All right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki. So on behalf of the Temple Management, as well as our congregation, I take this opportunity to thank His Holiness, 
Krishna Maharaj and Krishna Maharaj for giving us this wonderful association this morning along with the beautiful class and reminded all of us what we should be doing with our lives. Okay, so with this, you can I move on to the rest of the program for the morning? Um, we'd like to welcome His Grace Prana Prabhu. Is Prana Prabhu here? Yeah, there. Yes, Prana Prabhu is here. So he is from Australia. Can you just stand up so that everybody can see you? A very, very old friend of mine. <laughs> Thank you. Can we say a loud Hari Bol for him? Hari <laughs> we, we worked a lot together in the early 90s in Vrindavan. So I'm very happy to see him again here. Welcome back to Sri Jagannath Mandir. Also, we have a couple of programs for the rest of the morning. So immediately we'll have a token of appreciation for our Gopal Garden children. Yeah, we'll have that just before that. We also have something else, a little surprise. And then we'd like to inform everybody that um, that is an initiation ceremony. We appeal that all of you stay back and bless the newly initiates so that they can have a beautiful spiritual journey in this life. Okay, so the prasadam will only be served after the initiation ceremony. So there's no hurry. Okay? Also tomorrow is a Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's appearance day, as Maharaj mentioned, appearance day. Appearance. So, disappearance day. Disappearance day. Okay. Well, I just got the news. Thank you. So Maharaj will be giving a class tomorrow morning. And the class on, the program starts from 9 a.m. onwards. Then right after Pushpanjali. So those of you who are available, it's also school holidays, I believe. So many will be available to do please attend and let's together have another wonderful association with Maharaj along with us. Okay? Um, there is also, um, is Suryanga Chaitanya Prabhu here? Can you please come up to the front, please? Suryanga Chaitanya Prabhu? Can you come up to the front, please? Can we do it fast? So, the temple president, uh, co-president, his Grace Kripa Siddha Prabhu is in Kochi. So, we had 29 students who graduated from the first Bhakti Shastri program officially done by Ishkar Malaysia with the Mayapur Institute. Maharaj is part of this wonderful team in Sri the Mayapur and the Mayapur Institute. So today we had a graduation ceremony and during the graduation ceremony Guru Dakshana was some the students put together and gave us an envelope and they offered a tray of fruits to the deities for Maharaj. So today, Suryanga Prabhu, he is the oldest in the class, uh, oldest in the class, so I'm calling him to give the students Guru Dakshana. He was also a student. So can you please kindly on behalf of the student offer to Maharaj? Please give it to Maharaj. Yes. So the student came, you know, when, when, when someone is old, nobody is too late to learn. Prabhu is in his late 60s, he's struggling. But he completed just like all the other 29 of you. Next, we have 
and Kripa Prabhu asked me to do it. Thank you. This is from Sri Jagannath Mandir. This is from the Bhakti Kashi TV, along with the TMC, our token of appreciation for Maharaj for being one of our teachers. Not alone Maharaj taught us the class, he literally went through a revision for all of them to ensure that they know and they will all pass. And amazingly, everybody passed in his paper. <laughs> so Maharaj, on behalf of the Temple Management Council, the students and uh, also the admin team, uh, we like to thank you very much. We like two people to stand up here. Morali Prabhu, are you here? And Amrita Saki Mataji. Morali Prabhu, are you here? No, no, he's not here. So Amrita Saki Mataji and Morali Prabhu were our strongest team in the admin to make sure that everything went well. Okay? This is our strongest team in the so we must not forget appreciation is for all and then everybody else. So many came forward. Okay? So this is from the TMC and the Bhakti Shastri Ki Maharaj. Thank you very much for doing this that honor. Now, some of the students have asked me, will we be able to take a group photograph, the Bhakti Shastri student and the admin team? Yes, we will take a group photograph. Bhakti Shastri graduates and the admin team after the initiation ceremony. Okay, let's get the morning program going. Okay, so that there will be less disruption. You wanted to have a picture with one of our teachers? Yes, Maharaj is here with us. Next, we want to also inform everybody here that Maharaj was talking about the six-year-old boy who learned the Vishnu Shahasrana. So today we also have our Gopal Gari here. They had the Sloka recitation last week during the Gita Jayati upstairs on their own. And many of them have done wonderfully well. So we want Maharaj to actually honor them today and give away the prizes. Now, just before that, I just make two quick announcements. Uh, one, sorry, one, I made the other one about Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur Sabhya. The other is that there's a surprise gift uh, for all the new Gautama donors. Surprise gift out there, you can meet Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, it's something like this that the box looks like. Your surprise gift, whatever is inside is a surprise. So Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, you will be out there, you can collect from him later on. Okay? So now, Mataji, I am passing it to Shivan. Who's taking over? Devan Champakalata Mataji? Harshirani Mataji. Okay, over to you. So Mataji, Hema Mataji, come here please. Maharaj, this is our principal of the, I like, principal of the Gokul Garden. At least we know, she completed her Bhakti Shastri also. So, we are going to give away the prizes, so I'll pass over to Hare Krishna, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru and Kauranga. We would like to welcome His Holiness uh, Narshima Maharaj and devotees to this Gopal Garden Sloka Recitation Competition Prize Giving Ceremony. We are pleased to have His Holiness with us today. In conjunction of Gita Jayanti, Goku Garden had Sloka Recital Competition for the kids aged 7 to 12 years old. We had 22 kids participated in this competition. 22. Yeah. Each year, 
Goku Garden encourages our kids to learn and memorize six to ten slokas as per the teaching syllabus. And these slokas are actually selected from the list of Bhakti Sanskrit slokas. Before we proceed to the prize giving ceremony, let us watch some of the highlights of the event.
So you, you have Shiksha Gurus. And when you're following strictly four principles in 16 rounds, then at that time, then you're actually qualified to take shelter. You take shelter at that time and, and you propose to the spiritual teacher that I want in the future, I would like to take initiation, I would like you to be my spiritual teacher. So then the teacher can give you, can accept and give you shelter and then maybe in the future, after some time, again up to the individual and also up to the spiritual teacher. Every individual has the right to decide for themselves when and from whom they want to take initiation. There's no compulsion that, oh, you have to get initiated, oh, he has to be your guru. It's up to everyone to decide for themselves when and from whom you want to take the initiation. And then it's also up to the spiritual teacher to decide if he's willing to accept us. You know, we may come for initiation and the spiritual teacher may say, no, no, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not willing to give initiation. Maybe they will say, you know, they may say, you know, I don't come here very often, I can't be in touch with you. For some reason they may have, they didn't want to give initiation. Anyway, the point is, it's up to every devotee and, and every individual spiritual master. Just as the devotee can decide who they want and when they want to take initiation, the spiritual master, he also has a choice to decide when and from whom he's willing to give initiation to. So that's important to understand. So there are two initiations. The first initiation is initiation into the chanting of Hare Krishna Mantra. So before taking initiation into the chanting, of course, you have to practice. You first of all have to be chanting 16 rounds. You cannot say, well I'm chanting two or three rounds today, but if you give me initiation, I'll chant 16. Sorry, that's not how it how it works. You have to first chant 16 rounds and after you've chanted 16 rounds for at least six months and preferably longer, then you can qualify for the initiation. Not the first give me initiation and then I'll chant. Cannot be like that. We don't take post-dated checks. Right? So, uh, that's the first initiation. The second initiation is given, and second initiation, second initiation is sometimes referred to it as the Brahminical initiation. At that time, the Gayatri Mantra is instructed to the devotee, and with the second initiation, then the devotee is qualified to do things like worship the deity, and also cook in the kitchen, to cook on the fire. So these kind of services are done by people who are second initiated. To go on the altar and offer our tea and to cook, you have to be very strictly following. So the second initiation is given to the bodhis who are very strict in following the principles. The second initiation is not compulsory, and it's not essential. The first, the first initiation is what is important. And it's the first initiation which can take you back to Godhead. Because the first initiation is chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. And that will give you a shelter of Lord Krishna. Second initiation, we're chanting Gayatri Mantra. That will take you to the Brahma. We don't want to just go to the Praman, but it depends, you know, if you meditate properly on the Gayatri Mantra, then it can help to increase our uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna. It can help to improve our quality in chanting. Anyway, uh, 
today we are giving initiation to a number of devotees, first initiation. The, in order to get first initiation, as I said, they have to be chanting 16 rounds. They also have to be strictly following the four principles. And in addition to that, they should also have attended what we know, what we call the Iskand Disciple Course. The Iskand Disciple Course is a course which was began, was initiated several years ago. And it's instructive because it describes the significance of initiation. It guides us in how to select the spiritual teacher, what we need to know about initiation. It also tells us about the ISKCON society into which we're being initiated. So being initiated into ISKCON, you should know how the society is organized and how it's managed and so on. So the disciple course will instruct you in all of these things. And I encourage people who have taken the disciple course, it's good to take it again. You take it again and take it, take it a few times because there's always new things to learn and to be understood. And it's a good idea not to just attend the disciple course one time and say, yeah, I already did. You have to attend a few times and get it very clear. What are the principles of initiation? How to recognize the spiritual teacher? To understand more about the society? Many different things which are mentioned in the disciple course, which are very important for us. So we encourage the devotees, you must do this and try to do it a few, a few times. If it's being held, I think Shantivardhana Prabhu teaches it, Shiva Chaitanya Prabhu teaches it, and some other senior devotees can also teach. It's a very important course. And uh, in addition to the disciple course, you also need recommendation from the temple authorities. You cannot just simply go to the guru and say, I want initiation, can you give me initiation? Sometimes people come to me and they say to me, I want initiation, but I say, have you got recommendation? You have to go to the temple authorities and ask them, are they approving your initiation? Are you approved? In other words, you, know, you have to be coming to the temple and you have to be associating here and guiding. Just recently, I was in another city and people came and they said, I've been practicing for 25 years. I want initiation. So, and do you come to the temple? No, we haven't come to the temple in the last 15 years. We had a problem, we had an argument with, the, with the, the management here, so I haven't come for 15 years. But now I want initiation. My mother's old and she, 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 she's getting sick and she wants initiation and I also want initiation because I went to the temple and I wanted to play the danga and they told me, you're not, you're not initiated, you cannot play the drum. <laughs> so like this, you know. So I said, well, you didn't come to the temple for 25 years. You didn't have any connection, you didn't come to any festivals or anything. I said, anyway, I said, you, he showed me the altar, which they worship at home, and he said, look, I, you know, I've been doing like that, so what about initiation? I said, well, first you take shelter. First you take shelter, and then you know, let's see how it goes. You know, but first you take shelter. But no, we don't want to do that. We want initiation. Are you going to give us initiation? They didn't want to even go through the process. So I said, no, sorry, I can't do that. I'm only a member of ISKCON myself. And I have to follow the procedures which are set up by ISKCON. So, we couldn't, we didn't agree to give them initiation, so what to do? 
He can, he can go to some other institution if he wants to take initiative. But we have, we have to follow the rules, the principles which are set up by the ISKCON management, the governing bodies, the leaders, they make these arrangements. We have to follow. We work together. There has to be that cooperation. So people coming for initiation, they have to have recommendation, they have to have attended the disciple course, and they have to be uh, in good standing with the devotees, cooperating with them. Alright? So, now we will give the, the beats and the names for the devotees. So, Look to the man.
Nanda Nandana Nanda Nandana Nanda Nandana One who gives pleasure to Nanda Maharaj Nanda Nandana Devi Dasi Nanda Nandana Devi Dasi Kita so all the candidates, please go to Srila Prabhupada, pay obeisance to Srila Prabhupada, then to the ladies and sit outside. Yes. Better tell them. Tell them you know? So, a number of people are coming here. So, she's another devotee from Kani. And regularly when I come to KL, I always go to Kani for program there. It's important to keep in touch with the devotees there. And of course, in the past, Ram Gopiman Prabhu and his wife were heading there in Kani. They were taking good care of the center. Now they're more active here. They have new management there. Alright, All right. so you're a man and woman, right? Single. Oh, that's right. You're single, right? Working. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're staying on your own. No, it is sex, no, it is 
and Mariji also passed away one year ago. So she also wants to go back to Baghdad and join her husband. Her husband's name was Rupeshwar and Prabhu. And her name was Jai Mohini. She already has a spiritual name. I can touch you. No gambling, no pesticides, no, no meat, fish, and egg. No, one more stuff. Intoxication. And everyday chanting. Okay. Alright, so. Swami 
नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवा प्रचारणे निर्विशेष सन्यवा पाश्चात्य Shri Mati 
भक्ति वेदात स्वामी के नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवादी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा सुन्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश We will now move to the outside at the arena where the lagya will take place. Yes, sir. Stay there, guys. 